and also when you are submitting your work please write on the paper your name because your parents are posting it some of the parents names we don't know some regular kids we know okay okay sanskriti's mom phone number is this okay she's posting with the sanskritis like that some of the new kids like um, we don't know who is that uh, and if the name is there the child name we can address and we can appreciate okay abina drawed very well good job abina like that So please, uh, whenever you are posting your work, write your name so that we know who submitted it. Mathe, and also, um, my it starts from nineteenth to twenty fifth. Mm hmm. Okay. Nineteenth mm -hmm. to twenty fifth. Yeah, that is what that is what everybody is having, right? Nineteenth to twenty fifth. Okay, very good. I have twenty third to twenty fifth. Only you, Kabir. You do, you have a different dates. Isha, when is your holiday starting? Thanksgiving. It's twenty three to twenty twenty three to I think. Let me check, Mataji. Okay, check and come. Ah, uh, Radhika Vallabh Prabhu. हरे कृष्णा राधिका वल्लभ प्रभु आई डोंट नो राधिका जी इट्स 23 टू 25 राधिका माता जी मॉम दैट्स राधिका कचली माता जी ओ यू केम विद राधिका वल्लभ प्रभु जी नेम नो नो माता जी इट वाज यू नो आई एक्चुअली इट्स मी ओनली ओ व्हाट यू से इज राधिका वल्लभ प्रभु आई वाज कंफ्यूज्ड व्हाई दिस प्रभु जॉइन टुडे ओके ओके Thank you, Mata Ji. Hari Krishna. Ah, uh, you are you okay, dear Vrinda? Are you okay, Vrinda? Mata Ji, I'm putting my bag for four hours. I'm actually supposed to put for two, but I'm putting for two four hours. Oh my God! Because in the trip, I'm not going to put it. Where are you going for trip? It starts with the hills. I will tell you, Mata Ji. I will text you. Sure. Only Brinda can be happy, even if she's putting this one. <laughs> <laughs> She got used to it, Mata. <laughs> What is Sanskrit eating? I'm just eating. Is it a sambar sadam or a pasta? No, I think you're using your hands. Yes. <laughs> okay. Like pickle um. Pickle rice. Yeah. Pickle. Wonderful. Okay, kids, we can get started now. Home. Oh. श्रीमतेशेषतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत दादर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे ऑल राइट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर पेशेंस एंड देन वी विल मूव ऑन टू द थर्ड चैप्टर थर्ड चैप्टर दैट इज द सॉरी थर्ड कैंटो द 16th चैप्टर फॉर टुडे <clears throat> so it's a very beautiful episode and uh, we will see what we have seen so far okay and then get into today's verse so that you all understand the context it is uh, the topic for this is uh, j and vijay are cursed by the sages okay uh, now uh, the first verse is talking about after congratulating the sages for their nice words the lord spoke as follows you know before that i'm going to share my screen um so that uh, we we are not missing out on the verse for today okay i always forget that and uh, please remind me ati vinita gandrika mahatachi always reminds me but i uh, overlook that anyways we will uh, do that after i am done sharing the uh, 
background story. All right. All right. After congratulating the sages for their nice words, the Lord spoke as follows. Under the fear, understanding the fear of the Kumaras, the Lord spoke to pacify them. What is he saying? These attendants of mine are ignoring me and have offended you. I approve the punishment given by you. You are devoted to me. Who is he addressing this? The Lord is addressing the four Kumaras. Okay, he's saying, anyways, Jay and Vijayana, they have offended you and what you have given as a punishment, it's right only. And I approve that punishment. Why? Because you guys are devoted to me. That is why I approve it. To me, the Brahmana is the highest and most beloved. Since the disrespect was shown by my attendants, I consider this as an offense by myself. So I seek your forgiveness. Here, we have to understand a very important point. If the servant is not following something, it is because of the master. That is what the Lord says here. The Lord says, oh, Jay and Vijay, they have committed a mistake. And that is because I am their master. It's because of me. I am responsible for it. So, uh, I seek your forgiveness. I beg, I beg your pardon. Please accept me. And I, I really want to ask for forgiveness from you. See how uh, the Lord is going and asking for forgiveness from the four Kumaras. You know, we have to understand, how can the Supreme Lord commit an offense? Right? Who could punish the Supreme Lord? <laughs> this, is, uh, mm, uh, this, this is something just inconceivable, isn't it? What is the Lord trying to serve, save here, save, say here? The servant's mistake causes master's infamy. A wrong act committed by a servant leads to People blame to his master just as a spot of white leprosy pollutes the entire body. You know, kids, very important point here that is brought out through this particular point of Srila Prabhupada is that, see, we all know if there is a good Krishna conscious ruler, then what happens to that ruler? A good Krishna conscious ruler, he will take care of the society. He will take care of the praja. And because of him being Krishna conscious, the whole praja will become Krishna conscious. Isn't it, Kabir? If the king is Krishna conscious, don't you think the uh, Praja will become Krishna conscious? Yeah. Yeah. See, if your parents are Krishna conscious, we are automatically driven, isn't it? At least there is an impetus for us to perform Krishna consciousness. If your parents are not, then uh, probably at a later point in time is when you would have got into Krishna consciousness, isn't it? You're all very young now. It is, uh, you're probably six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years, 11 years. And how have you got into Krishna consciousness? What is the answer? Each one of you have the same story. It's because our parents are into Krishna consciousness. We are also into Krishna consciousness. Isn't it? Isn't it, Janvi? Yes or no? <laughs> yes, Sabina? I made my parents who made me Krishna consciousness. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. All of you guys, Isha, aren't you? Aren't you into KC because of your parents? Yes, Masiji. Yeah, see? Vinita, uh, sorry, uh, Vrinda. How about you, dear? Isn't it because of your mom and dad you're here? Mataji, Vrinda will answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it, dear? How about you, Smriti? How about you, Rishya? Yes, Mataji. Yes. yes, so we are all, yeah, since, see, at a young age, the only uh, way that we can all get into Krishna consciousness is because our parents are devotees. So we are all blessed and fortunate that our parents are devotees and because of which we are into this movement. We have to really be grateful for that. And here, mm, uh, we are seeing that the Lord is talking about servants making mistake because of master saying for me a wrong act is committed by a servant leads people to blame his master just as a spot of white leprosy if it's there in one spot what happens to that white leprosy it spreads all over the body okay and all this white white patches will be seen throughout the face throughout the legs throughout the body and everything it spreads so rapidly this is the analogy <clears throat> now the Lord is going to now glorify the Brahmanas. What is he saying? 
I attained fame all because of you guys. You Brahmanas, we I attained fame, and he's giving uh, how he attained the fame by who hearing whose glories the whole world, including the Chandala, is purified. That Lord I am. I have obtained fame as a Tita because of you. I will not hesitate to lop off my own arm if it offends you. So how is he glorifying the uh, Brahmanas? He's saying I'm going to chop my own hand if it is not going to glorify you. What I will do? I'll chop off my hand if that part is not obeying the orders of mine to obey you. So I will not hesitate. If this hand is going to offend you, I'm going to chop it off. And then he's saying, because of my service to devotees like you, the dust of my feet immediately wipes out all the sin. Even Lakshmi does not leave me, not attached to her, and others perform vows to obtain her favor. So he's saying, because I am doing service to you, what happens now? All the sins are wiped out of others who serve to my lotus feet. Because I am serving you, because of which, what happens? Uh, the dust of my lotus feet immediately wipes out all the sin. Even though Lakshmi, right? She's not. I'm not attached to her, but she, she serves my lotus feet. Even though I, I'm not attached to her. And he's also saying other people have so many favors to obtain from Lakshmi Devi. So all because I'm serving your lotus feet, that people are coming to me and being able to serve my lotus feet. In that way, I'm able to wipe out all your all their sins. And then he's saying. See, he's just glorifying the Brahmanas. Here, what is uh, the motive? The motive is the Lord is glorifying the Brahmanas. Then he's saying, I eat food through the mouth of the Brahmanas. I don't relish the offerings through my mouth as a sacrificial fire with the same relish as I do the delicacies overflowing with ghee which are offered to the mouths of the Brahmanas. I relish that food that which, uh, uh, that which is taken by you. This is what I like. Even though a lot of remnants, so a lot of food is offered to me in the form of a sacrificial fire, I'm more attached to food uh, that is uh, coming out of your mouth. And then he's saying, if I take the dust of the Brahmanas on my head, who will refuse to do the same? By taking their dust, I am the master of unobstructed energy and the water that washed my feet, Ganga, that sanctifies the three worlds, including Shiva. If I am going to take the dust of the Brahmana's lotus feet, who will hesitate to take my dust? Even Lord Shiva is taking my Charanamrit from Ganga. That is what he is saying. People who displease me, those who look upon Brahmana's cows and different, defenseless creatures as different from me, are like serpents with sinful visions. Where will they go? They will go to hell. And they will be torn apart like a vulture-like messengers of Yama, Yamaraj. Whoever is displeasing me, me means who? What is he saying? Dear kids, I'm going to ask you some question and answers. You know what? You guys are into so many different activities. I'm seeing you guys are doing uh, so many things by actually bending down your face. <laughs> so I'm a little bit worried about what is getting into your head. And uh, mm, so I'm going to ask you some question and answers. So let's see how, how fair you do, how well you fare. Okay, this is what I'm going to do for test. Uh, you know, usually I do it. Some For some classes, I have forgotten question and answer session. Uh, <laughs> so let's just resume that. And uh, I will make sure to ask all. Okay. Anyways, uh, what is he saying? Those who look upon Brahmana's cows and uh, defenseless creatures as different from me, they are like serpents with sinful vision. And where are they going to go? They're going to go to hell. And they'll be turned, uh, they'll be torn apart like vultures in the place of Yamaraj. Can you all imagine how brutal it is? Because they're not, obviously they're not giving respect to the Brahmanas. Uh, they, or they, they're not giving respect to the cows. These are all uh, something that Krishna likes and we have to give respect to them because Krishna loves them. Krishna and Krishna's paraphernalia, Krishna's devotees are not different from Krishna. That's how we have to think. The 11th and 12th verse is something that we'll be seeing today. I'll also be uh, going through the purport of Srila Prabhupada. Okay, so let's get into the brief summary and then we will talk about it in my slides. People who please me, those who are heart and respect the Brahmanas, even if they are words and look upon them as own self and pacify them as the son would appease an angry father. 
Let them come back soon. My servants, not knowing the mind of their master, have committed an offense. I shall therefore deem it a favor if you order that, although reaping the fruit of the transgression, they may return to me very soon. So now we have to understand Vishnu Chakravarti Takura is saying uh, that the Lord was not happy with the Kumara's act of cursing the doorkeepers and the above statement of the Lord were tinged with sarcasm and deep attachment towards Jay and Vijay. So far, whatever has the Lord has spoken, right? It is uh, in the tone of sarcasm. Do you all know what sarcasm is? Abhinav, go ahead. Sarcasm is... Sarcasm is when you um, don't actually mean it. Mean it, yeah. Exactly, dear. It is actually when you don't mean it. You're in a very sarcastic way. Say, for example, uh, the kheer was a little bit salty. But you say, oh my God, the kheer was so sweet. <laughs> it was apparently a little bit salty. But you're saying, oh God, it is so sweet. <laughs> so it's sarcastically, you're trying to remark her to say that the kheer was not good. Okay. But here, Lord is also trying to glorify the Brahmanas. But in fact, he had deep attachment for whom? Jay and Vijay. Okay. This is the tone we have to understand. This is the mood the Lord has spoken with. Now, let's go back to the purport. And we have 10 more minutes. So, I'll keep the last 5 minutes for question and answers. And then we can um, yeah, see how, fair you, how, how well you fare. Okay. Now, the 16th, uh, sorry, the 11th. We are talking about the purport of Srila Prabhupada. What is he saying? It has been observed in, observed in many instances in the Vedic scriptures that when Brahmanas or Vaishnavas curse someone in an angry mood, the person who is cursed does not take it upon himself to treat the Brahmanas or Vaishnavas in the same way. There are many examples. For example, the son of Kuvera, when cursed by sage Narada, did not seek revenge in the same harsh way, but submitted. So we see here, Jay and Vijay have been cursed by who? By four Kumaras. But did Jay and Vijay uh, revert back to the Brahmanas and they were very angry with the uh, Brahmanas and they did they curse back the Brahmanas? Even though they are the residents of Vaikuntha, they could have cursed back, isn't it? They had all the powers to do so. But did they curse back? Okay, let me ask this question. Did they curse back? Ramachandra, go ahead here. You are not at all audible, Ramachandra. Are you speaking? Yes, Mataji. Can you speak a little louder, dear? Um, yes, they are. They did not curse them. Yeah, they did not curse. Why did not curse? Because they were they were devotees and uh, they were like they like knew Lord very well, mm -hmm. and, they, and they don't want to curse the devotees of the Lord. Yeah, so they did not, see, if you're going to curse back, that is revenge. And revenge is a bodily act. You're considering yourself in the bodily platform and you're acting. And revenge is, uh, it's not a good idea for especially people in Vaikuntha. Everybody is purified there. So why would they, they have to take revenge for such things? So they always perceive this to be Lord's plan. And it is, of course, Lord's plan as well. Okay, so that is why they did not curse back. And we have Damodar Leela instance, right? We all uh, just finished Karthik month. Uh, now, these pastimes are fresh in our minds because we have discussed through this pastime. And in the pastime, what is happening there? We are seeing that uh, the sons of Kubera, they have been cursed by Nath Muni, but they did not, they did not seek avenge on Rav, uh, Nath Muni. They accepted the curse and they became the trees. Isn't it? And in a similar way, if you look at the, another instance from Srimad Bhagavatam, Shringi. Shringi cursed who? Are you all sleeping or what? Uh, <laughs> huh. Parikshit Maharaj. Yes, Parikshit Maharaj. Who said that? Janavi. Janavi, yes. Yes, Janavi, Parikshit Maharaj. He Did he curse back? Nope. No, Ramachandra, you're right. He did not curse back. So, what turn? We are not here to avenge or revenge against people who have did some who did something for us. Instead, we learn from our mistakes, we just tolerate and move on. This is what God has taught me, and this is something good for me. Yes, it's beneficial. Whatever Lord does is beneficial in our lives, auspicious in our life. Something I am going to learn from this. This is the mood. We we have to take it and move with that mood. Okay. That's what is seen here. And 
Nowadays, some foolish, what is Shilap Prapat saying? See, I go through these purpose because you guys are so intelligent and um, you're all, I'm treating you as if uh, you're all adults, okay? And that's why go, we go through the purpose in depth. I don't even leave a sentence as much as possible. We try to go through what is talked about in the Shila Prabhupada's purport. Um, so even though this is a kid's class, I go or uh, discussing the purpose with you because you all are so, so intelligent. Anyways, Isha, you have a question, dear? Yes, go ahead with your question, dear. Mataji, what was the day that um, the, the four Brahmanas cursed Jay and Vijay? There's no particular date that is mentioned here. Uh, so we saw, right, how, when, what happened. See, they entered through the doors and the seventh gate they entered. At that time, Jay and Vijay came and they blocked. And that is when the curse happened. Remember, I happened to tell you the story to you in Govinda class. Yes, Mataji, but when is the day? No, no, uh, we don't have that date. See, the date and oh. chronology is not something that is discussed in Bhag Bhagavatam. See, we have oh. different kalpas. And uh, see, in one episode, we'll be talking about Brahma's first day. Uh, the first uh, mm, first day of Brahma, another uh, the, another episode we'll be talking about 51st year of Brahma first day. So, it uh, you know, this year, this Kalpabed is there. There is so many instances that has happened in Bhagavatam, which is taken from different mm -hmm. Kalpas and different uh, days of Brahma. Okay. So, we not specifically be bothered about the days. But to understand, Jay and Vijay appeared in the material world in the Chakshusha Manvatra because that is when we have Hiranyaka, that is when we have Varaha, right? Uh, that who's also in the Chaksha Man Mantra, the sixth Man Mantra. This, this much detail we have. This happened in the sixth Man Mantra. All right. So your question is answered here. Isha? Yes, Good question, dear. Good question. So now, Prabhupada, what is he saying? Nowadays, some foolish persons have manufactured the term Daritra Narayana, indicating the poor man should be accepted as a representative of Narayana. But in Vedic culture, we don't find the poor men should be treated as representatives of Narayana. Everybody are part and parcel. There is no distinction between poor, rich and everybody. That's what is the point of Srila Prabhupada. We cannot um, distinguish people as poor and rich. Everybody, we are all part and parcels of Krishna. Poor man should not be unprotected, but Brahmana should be treated as a representative of Narayana and we should be worshipped like him. Of course, there are stages, isn't it? Who's close to the Lord? We have um, um, Kalishta, Madhyama and Uttama. Uttama is close to the Lord. As Vaishnavas, we have to give more respect to the Uttama Dikaris than the Madhyama Dikaris or Dikaris. Then a uh, little bit more respect to, um, I mean, after Uttama, we have to give respect to the Madhyama Dikaris. Then after Madhyama, we have to at least give respect to the Kanishta in our minds. So this is how we treat and grade the Vaishnavas. Depending upon how advanced they are, accordingly, we give respect to them. All right. It is specifically said that to classify the Brahmanas, one should, one, one's face should be lotus-like. A lotus-like face is exhibited when one is adorned with love and affection. In this respect, the example of fathers, fathers being angry at the son and the son trying to pacify the father with the smiling and sweet words is very appropriate. So this uh, scene is, should be considered in such a way that, hmm, you know, a father is being angry at the son because why? The son has committed an offense against these brahmanas and the son is now trying to pacify the father with the smiling sweet words, uh, which is what is the analogy that Srila Prabhupada is quoting here. Yes, Smriti, you've raised your hand here. Uh, I'm not able to hear you. Is my audio really uh, bad or what? Mataji, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Mataji, can you full screen like put that? Oh, on? yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I always forget to do that. Thanks for reminding. And I have to go through words also. I haven't done that. <laughs> Let me see. How do I do that? Is it view? Yeah, I think it's view. Yeah, view and slideshow. Slide. Anybody knows where I'm I am? Here that? in the bottom where the Zoom screen is there, right? Ah, here now? Yeah, beside, that, beside that. Oh, this one? Just beside the Zoom. The Zoom line. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's like the TV. TV. Ah, like the TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yes. <laughs> the TV example helped me. Good, good, good. Thank you, Mataji. And thank you, Janavi. 
Here also, when Jay and Vijay were cursed by the four Kumaras, they did not become harsh towards them. Rather, they submitted. Very nice, isn't it? That should be the way of treating Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. One may sometimes be faced with a grievous situation created by a Brahmana, but instead of meeting him with a similar mood, one should try to pacify him with a smiling face and a mild treatment. Brahmanas and Vaishnavas should be accepted as the earthly representatives of Narayana. We cannot see God in person, isn't it? Till the time we come to Prema, it's difficult to see the Lord, uh, Lord to have Lord Darshan, but we have the Darshan of the devotees. And uh, here, Srila Prabhupada is saying the Brahmanas and Vaishnavas should be accepted as earthly representatives of Narayana. And we have to learn from Jay and Vijay that they did not, uh, they just submitted to whatever uh, four Kumaras said and uh, they did not revolt against or they did not, uh, you know, give them a curse back. Instead, they had a smiling face with a mild treatment. They happened to smile. And this can do wonders, dear devotees. If somebody, if some Vaishnava is trying to correct us, it is for our own good. If we are trying to revolt against that person, oh, how can you say that? How can you do this to me? What? How? How? Uh, why are you saying this? Are you really good or what? If you are going to ask back on so many questions to Vaishnavas, then the opportunity that you get for you to be corrected will be lost if you are not acting in a proper way. And similar with you also. If your parents are saying something to you, it's for your own good. If we revolt against them, then we are losing something really valuable, dear kids. Again. I tell you, it applies to me as well. I'm your, I'm a, I'm the first student who's listening to my own words, dear kids. Believe me. Anyways, moving on. We are going to the twelfth verse, which is the last verse for today. And here it is being said from the statement, we can understand how anxious the Lord is to get the servitor back into Vaikuntha. Therefore, this instant proves that those who once who have entered the Vaikuntha never falls down. What is he saying in the translation? These servants of mine, they have transgressed against you, not knowing the mind of the master. I shall therefore deem it, I, I deem it a favor done to me. If you order that, although re, uh, reaping the fruit of the transgression, they may return to the presence, to, they may return to my presence soon, and the time of their exile from my abode may expire before long. So, what is Lord trying to do here? The four Kumaras have Kurds, Jay and Vijay, and they have asked them to go back to the earthly planet because they are showing dualities. Remember, that was the episode we saw. And uh, because of the dualities you are showing to us, you are not allowing us to enter into the Vaikuntha planet and therefore we curse that you may go to the earthly planet. Now, the Lord is asking a favor by asking them to return soon. Uh, so, again, what is being talked about here by Prabhupada is that those who have Vaikuntha, even though they go to the earthly planet for a short time to uh, uh, to have the Lord enjoy a particular pastime, they go there and they come back immediately. So it's not a fall down. It will never be a fall down. Once you go to Vaikuntha, you always stay there. And there's no fall down for a devotee who is in Vaikuntha, which is what is the point that Srila Prabhupada is making here. The Lord is always anxious to get such devotees back again to the Vaikuntha planets as soon as possible. See, it is to be assumed that there is no possibility of misunderstanding between the Lord and the devotees. But when there are discrepancies or disruptions between one devotee and another, one has to suffer the consequences, although the suffering is temporary. The Lord is so kind to his devotees that he took all of the responsibility for the doorman's offense and requested give them to return to Vaikuntha as soon as possible. So first of all, what all Lord did to Jay and Vijay is something we need to understand. What did Lord do? He he uh, told, oh, uh, the servant committed a mistake. No, no, I'm responsible, even though the servants have committed a mistake. What is the second point he's trying to say? Even if they're going to go to the earthly planet, they're going to stay there only for a short way, and they're going to come back to my facility of Vaikuntha as soon as possible. So, and the third point they are saying, uh, even though there are going to be some discrepancies that that's going to happen between one devotee, that is Jay and Vijay, and uh, the four Kumaras are having some sort of discrepancy, and there is a consequence to that discrepancy. What is that consequence? The consequence is that the four Kumaras have cursed Jay and Vijay because of which they have to go to the earthly planet. But the suffering that Jay and Vijay is going to go through is only going to be temporary because the Lord is going to bring them back. Again, Jay and Vijay are going there to go to uh, actually give virus to the Lord, right? They are going to the uh, earthly planet to have the Lord enjoy these virus pastimes. So this is uh, why they have gone. So it's not in fact a suffering also in one way. 
to do it. But again, for a devotee to get himself separated from of Vaikuntha is a suffering. So that is why it's mentioned as a suffering, but that suffering is only going to be for an interim period of time. Anyways, dear kids, I think I have exhausted my time. I'm going to ask a question and answers in the next class. When I start off, I'll ask question and answers, and then we will move on to the uh, verse for that day. Does it sound like a plan? Any other questions, dear kids? So, Mataji, we did not do the verse, right? Ah, we did not do the verse. One minute. I'll, uh, this, I have the verse on the other screen. I'm going to end it. Just two minutes. We just uh, complete that uh, particular. Thank you, Mataji, for reminding. I wanted to do it. I... Okay, let me. Okay, are you all able to see? Um, one minute. Mataji, there's no screen open. Oh, really? Now we can now see. Now we can see. Now I can see. Oh, now you can see. Okay. But why it's not going up, I don't know. It's stuck. <laughs> oh, my God. I have it in the uh, first slide. I don't know why this is... Mati, maybe exit it and re-enter. Okay. Let me see if I can... Um... Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll... yeah, it's going up now. Okay, good. I'm going to share again. Mm, yeah, got it. All right, Samskriti, go ahead, dear. Well, okay, one minute, that... one minute, Samskriti. We can do at least three people together, dear. If it's okay, we can do Advait, uh, Samskriti, and um, Vrinda. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, Samskriti, Vrinda, and Abhina. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, and Abhina. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, dear. All, all of you synchronized it very well. Smriti, Ramachandra, and Kabir. Second, second three. Vadanti tatasvapidas tatvam yamyana mahvayam Rammi tatvam mahvayam Thank you. Again, uh, we'll go to the next three. One minute. We have Advait. Oh, it's only Advait. Advait, Isha. And Janavi. Go ahead. Okay, Wonderful, dear. Wonderful. Thank you. And that's it, right? We have all the raised hands covered. Okay. So now I'll give it to Mataji. Mataji, I didn't get to read. Oh, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, dear. Do you know the verse by heart? Who's this? This is Ansh, Mataji. Ansh, you read. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry? Um, I don't know by heart. Okay. Uh, one minute. I'm sorry, Mataji. Okay, go ahead, dear. Vadanti Tatvavidas Tat Tatvas Vatvam Yajanamatvayam Prameti Paramatmati Bhagavan Niti Sabjate Okay, dear. Thank you so much. Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Thank you so much. Yeah, today we have Revati Mataji for the moral story. Thank you, Mataji. Revati Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hey, look today. Who is there with Revati <laughs> Mataji? I found you. Yay! <laughs> Special guest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna Mataji. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. 
um, enjoyed the previous class. I see Mataji has given a lot of examples, right? Did you guys enjoy it? Yes, Mataji. Yes, ma All right. Can we can we read some moral stories? Yes, Mataji. Okay. Um, one second. That's fine, Amma. So, so today, right, we are based on the time. Like, uh, I have three stories for you guys, okay? One is the wise enemy, and the second one is the washerman and the lazy donkey, and the three brothers, okay? Let's go ahead and read one by one. Okay, what do you all think about when you see the uh, topic of the wise enemy? I think that the crab is going to try to attack the um, seagull, but the yeah. seagull is wise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Okay, ma. Okay. Can we, can we read the story and then we will go into it? Okay. Okay, so are you guys able to see my screen? Are you see a crab? Yes. Okay. Okay. So you look at it. There was a one uh, once upon a time, right? Um, there lived a very big uh, snake, right? You see that there is a one big banyan tree. Okay, it's in in a big forest, right? There is there is one big banyan tree. You see that there are a lot of cranes living in that forest, right? You see the, the you see the number of cranes, and um, there and you know you see that um, uh, banyan tree, right? There is a hole inside that banyan tree. There lived a snake. Okay, so let's see what is going to happen. You see the the cranes are chatting over here, and the snake is coming out of the hole, and uh, it is trying to chat with the cranes. So what do you think that, uh, what do you think uh, those uh, must be chatting with? The crane is uh, chatting with the snake. Mataji, how can a crane chat with a snake? They, uh, no, they you know what? It's a story. All, um, all the animals, right? They all have their own way of um, communication, communicating, right? Yes, Mataji. Yeah, that's how they both communicate. You know, right? We humans uh, try to communicate with the humans, right? In a language. Like we have a common uh, thing called a language. So that's how we are communicate. But there are a lot of people. Um, for example, the animals, right, with the sound itself, they try to communicate each other. Okay, let's see what is the conversation going on between the cranes and the snake. Okay. Okay. So, you know what, the cranes, right, uh, they lived in that forest, but they used to go um, uh, to catch that fish, right? There is a river nearby. They go to the river and try to catch the fish, right? And then, um, you know, like they used to lay eggs in this nest. There is a nest, they, they try to build a nest in the tree and they put their eggs in that um, uh, nest, right? And then they go, um, the mommy crane will go um, uh, get catch the fish and then get that fish to that uh, because it's their food, right? So they it will uh, get that fish and then uh, giving it to the baby cranes, right? So this uh, snake, right? It used to watch what these cranes are doing. Like he knows, like um, what is their uh, cranes like in and out schedule, right? Okay, from morning, right? They are going to the. Um, nearby the river and trying to catch the fish and then coming back in the evening. In the meantime, right, there are some uh, baby um, 
they laid some eggs okay from that um, egg um, the small baby cranes will be hatched out once the time comes okay so okay so one particular day right the snake uh, knew the schedule of this uh, cranes right so one particular day right uh, the crane felt very bad because you know like every other time when they try to uh, go fetch their food right the snake used to go uh, take that egg from that nest and he used to eat okay so every time this is happening so as a as a parent right the mommy is feeling very uh, bad that okay every other time i am laying the eggs but the snake is eating all the babies right because a uh, snake loves to eat the eggs and the milk that is um, the snake's favorite food right so mata ji uh, yeah ma it's a it's a he it's a dad okay ma that's fine <laughs> you know in in media crane okay so you see that uh, the mommy crane was crying and um, he was walking near that shore right and then uh, he was crying and uh, by the time right there was there lived a crab nearby that river right so this um, crab is talking to the crane that what is the matter why are you uh, even crying okay so uh, the crane started explaining red right, there um, in uh, the where we built the nest in the tree right this there lived a snake and he is trying to eat all the eggs whatever the eggs we are laying he is climbing up to the banyan tree and he ate my poor baby cranes from their nest so he almost lost all his eggs right so as a mother like he is feeling very uh, she is feeling very sad right so she wants to take a revenge okay so she is asking the crab that um, i really wanted to take a revenge against that snake so can you give me some ideas okay so this crab started talking now oh this wicked crane is our enemy so the crab thought to himself the crab right he is acting like he is trying to do a good for that crane but technically he is not doing uh, technically he is not doing good so the crab is thinking that he is thinking about himself this wicked crane is our enemy he too eats our babies um, and you know um, the crane is like now he is in the very sad mood right that's why he is asking the help but once upon a time this crane also used to eat all the crabs egg okay then does he feel bad about us See, you know what is happening like um, if we do something bad to others right um, we never realize that uh, that is bad thing for them right we thought like okay it's a casual action you are doing but until and unless we got into that situation right we wouldn't even know that that is bad for um, that is bad for us right then why should we help him that's what the crab is thinking in his mind and talking okay in fact we too need to take a revenge against this crane you know what when when we are really in a bad mood right we really don't know to whom you are going and asking the help from right all these while um, this crane and uh, crab both are the enemies okay all of a sudden right he started going and talking to the crab and asking help so crab is thinking himself okay now this is the right time i need to take a revenge against this king i i have to give him some ideas that instead of helping him right it has to ruin his life okay so now crab started whatever he was uh, thinking all these things he thought in his mind now he started talking to the crane okay okay i'm going to give you a good idea to get rid out of this uh, snake which is lived in your tree right now listen to me carefully and you have to follow like whatever the instructions i am going to give you okay a mongoose lives in a hole under the big pipal tree you catch a few fishes okay you catch the fishes and put it in that hole okay then this mongoose will try to eat the fish and it will come nearby the banyan tree so that mongoose will kill that snake because the snake will come and uh, 
uh, come nearby that hole, right? And by the time this mongoose itself will kill. Okay, so your enemy will be dead, and you uh, uh, from now on, right? You can save your eggs and you can save your kids. Okay, this will be solving your problems. Okay, see the crane is in a very bad mood. He lost all his intelligence and. Um, he is not even able to think whatever the crab is telling, right? He thinks that the crab is telling him the good things, okay? So the crane, right? He didn't even think about it. He exactly followed whatever the instructions the crab uh, told uh, the crane. He is catching the fish and uh, trying to put inside that hole, okay? So the mongoose is coming, whatever they were expecting, right? There, as it was foreseen, and he did kill the snake, okay? He killed the snake, but... After killing the snake, right? He went and he went inside that um, hole wherever that uh, uh, snake was living in that banyan tree. Okay, now right, the crane get rid out of the snake. He added a one more headache into it, right? He got added with that mongoose. So this mongoose will be doing whatever the activities the um, crane, uh, the snake was doing all these while, correct? So the mongoose is climbing to the tree and killed all the cranes. Oh, you know what? He has not only killed the baby cranes. He killed all the cranes, even the bigger cranes. One by one, he ate everyone. Thus, the crane got rid out of the snake. But you know what happened? He got rid out of the snake, but he, he lost all his family, right? And then now... Um, the crab is feeling that, okay, whatever the idea I gave, he finished all his enemies in one shot, right? Because all the cranes got killed. So what would be the, what would be the model? Never listen to You don't, Mataji, we don't harm anybody. Don't listen to any enemy's advice because it can lead you into something not good. Mm -hmm. Like big trouble. Yeah. And if you listen to people who are your enemies, uh -huh. they will like just stick you because they want to win. So they mm -hmm. will stick you so you shouldn't listen to them. Mm -hmm. That's a think, good of, one. think of who you're asking first and then mm -hmm. ask. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. You know, we should be knowing to whom we and are asking the help, right? Sometimes, right, when we are really in a bad mood or we are angry about something, we go ask some help. But the people, right, they try to utilize your situation and they'll give you the bad ideas. At that time, right, we won't be even thinking whether am I doing the right thing or wrong thing, right? Ma, otherwise, raise the hand. You want to talk? Marty, the moral of the story is don't talk to strangers and even if they try to talk to you, Mm -hmm. And even if you want to talk to them, be careful. And mm -hmm. before listening to any advice, uh, mm -hmm. think it through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice one. Um, Rishya? So, Mataji, mm -hmm. this crab, you said the cranes and like long back ago, cranes used to kill crabs or something, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, because the crabs saying, because the cranes are killing the crabs, the crabs think that the crane is going to kill the crab. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So, and the crab thinks it's going to kill it. So, yeah. so the cra cra crab gave, gave it like a bad idea and then mm -hmm. the mongoose came mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then and then the crab. I think the crab knows the mongoose, but mm -hmm. still the but still the mongoose came and killed the snake. He killed all the uh that those all cranes. Yeah. And and also we don't want to kill anyone because we're doing. Yes. Yes. You know what? Once upon a time that uh, crane was doing the same thing to that uh, crab, right? But the um, but the crane did not even realize that he is eating all the babies of that crab, right? So you do good for others, the good things will come to us. You do bad things for others, then the bad things will come to us, right? Mother, Mother, if, yeah, someone, if someone gives you advice, mm -hmm. always think about what advice they give you and see if it's the correct one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, ma. So and also one more thing. So yeah, if we do, so if we do like um, if we if we like if you like do bad things like this is like about pulling toys or something like if we pull toys from our friend. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Next time when we, when when they when they want a toy, they will ask, and if we say no, they will just pull. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whatever bad things we do, they will do, and whatever good things that we do, they will do. Oh, that's a very nice one. Um, I forget what is the name. Rishya. Rishya. Okay, ma. Vrinda, you want to say something? Oh, I was going to say that um, if if you hurt somebody and if like um, if you hurt somebody, then they will hurt you back. Cause exactly. whatever you do, you will get it back. Yes, Amma. That's that's the exact model. Okay, let's go see what the model is. Amma. Yeah, Amma. Because the crane did something bad to the crowd. That's why he's. That's why the queen is regretting it back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, That's very it. nice. So what is the moral given, right? A dangerous enemy's advice is as dangerous as the enemy himself. Okay? You should therefore think twice before we fo you follow such advice. So what, what is the one thing we can relate uh, with the Krishna with this? So we think about that the memory, forgetfulness, and intelligence is coming in from Krishna, right? So even though when somebody is giving you the advice, then we need to use our intelligence to think whether is this the right thing I'm doing. Sometimes you really think that when you are really angry, right? Whatever the actions we are doing, they are all in a very bad mood, right? So let it let the anger go out of some time. Then you be cool after some time. Then you think about it like, oh, why did I even do this? Right? Have you all felt that? Yes, yes. Yes, want to go to the next more story. Yes. Okay, can we all move on to the next story? Yes, Mataji. Yes, Mataji. Mataji? Yeah, ma. Uh, the golden rule in my school uh, uh -huh. is treat uh, the golden rule in my school is Treat others how you want to be treated. Exactly. That's exactly is the, you can relate so many morals, right? This is what, it, you just treat the people how you wanted to be treated, right? That's the exact moral. Our main thing in school, we need to rise like an eagle. It's like, so like R stands, R and rise stands for respect. Mm -hmm. The I in Rai stands for integrity. Mm -hmm. And the S in, in, in Rai stands for safety. Mm -hmm. And the E stands for empathy. Mm. So Rai, integrity, um, uh, safety, and empathy, right? That's a good abbreviation for the Rai. Ma, can we all move on to the next story? Yes, Mataji. Okay, Ma. I think I will move this side. Okay. Yeah. So this is the story about the washerman and a lazy donkey. Okay. Are you all able to see my screen? Uh -huh. Yes, Mataji. Okay, Ma. So um, there, there was a village in olden days, okay? There is a washerman who had a very fat donkey, okay? So he would love to eat the food equivalent to four donkeys. You know, like um, he is not at all satisfied, like whatever he gives, right? So he is a very poor washerman. You know, in villages, right? The, the people used to wash the, um, the clothes, um, they most of the people right there used to be a washerman where he will go collect the clothes from each and every house in the village with all the collected clothes where right? he will go uh, near the 
the uh, river and then he will wash all the clothes and he will dry it and then he will bring it back uh, for that which in turn um, the people in the village will give him the food sometimes money whatever they could able to give him because that is his job okay so he used to have one donkey you know like when he collected all the clothes from the village right so he needs someone to uh, carry that uh, cloth right the, uh, he needs to wash the clothes so he used to have that he used to put that you see he is having one bag it's like um, the washer bag so he used to tie that and he will put it on the donkey and he will um, take it to the sewer and wash it okay okay so but when see when it is above when it is coming to the food right he used to eat like four times of what he is supposed to eat but when it comes to the work right you see there is a purple cloth um, in that he used to have all the clothes whatever the clothes he tied with right he used to have it over here okay but he, when it comes to the work right the donkey is very very lazy so he would hardly work you know like um, so this washerman right he got like really angry uh, you are not even working you are really lazy uh, so um, he is thinking about uh, he is thinking in his mind that i really have to get rid out of this donkey because he is not really helping me out so you know um, in the, if you see there are, the people used to put like if somebody lost a dog right they used to put a lost dog and they will give the details right like that he is uh, putting one sailboat like a very healthy donkey and an excellent price you know um, he, he has to sell that donkey right so he is lying that it's a very healthy donkey and he is going to give it for very good price okay so the donkey must be um, so he is thinking that i should um, um he should feed the donkey and he he wants to get rid out of this donkey, uh, donkey for once in um, once uh, once okay then in the wherever the villagers are passing by right they are seeing that boat okay so there is a donkey for sale and the price is also very reasonable let's go buy it okay so they are there they are I mean, like, uh, there is a farmer who passed by that uh, area and he is seeing that board and he is coming and asking that washerman, can you show me that uh, donkey? Okay. Then he is showing that donkey. He looks very healthy because, you know, he is like very chubby and um, he is telling that, you know, like he is capable of eating four times food than the other donkeys, but the work wise, right, he will do only one donkey of the work. So, but he is like, you know, like he want to get rid out of right. So he is tricking that uh, farmer, saying that he can do um, the work of the four donkeys, and I'm giving it to you for the cheap price. I like this donkey very much. Um, okay, um, then this farmer, right? You know, like if you get something cheap but with the better quality, right? Then you should be really thinking that why is this guy is selling me um, this healthy donkey for the low price, right? That's what he is thinking in his mind. Let's see what has happened. Okay. Then the farmer has started talking to this washerman. I really wanted to buy this uh, donkey. However, first I would like to keep the donkey, you know, like he is even more cleverer than this washerman. So he is telling that I would like to buy the donkey, but I will keep the donkey for two days, then I will get then um, the washerman is telling that, okay, please take him um, and do it. Okay, he, is, he took the donkey and uh, he wanted to test the donkey, right? Whether he can really capable of doing four donkeys of work, okay? And then he, he, took, he also has a couple of other donkeys in his farm, okay? He is just taking this donkey with the other donkey. Okay. So the fat donkey, right? You know what? If um, the other donkeys, they all are really good donkeys, they work hard, they eat in a right proportion. But you know what, that fat donkey wanted to influence others. You know, what is the moral we should be learning out of this? Um, only we should influence others, right? We should not get influenced by others, right? We should get the food equivalent to four donkeys. So the, the, as soon as the fat donkey, right, he started influencing the other donkeys, okay? 
then um, the other don donkeys also started behaving like that. Okay, so um, he started making friends with the other donkeys, whoever is there in that farm. Okay, he is influencing the other donkeys, but you know what? Um, most of the donkeys, right? Uh, they are very loyal to that farmer. That is the owner of their donkeys, right? Um, they always listen to the master means that uh, he is the teacher, right? He is who is taking care of all those donkeys, right? So they they are very loyal. Okay, so it is our duty to work very hard and to be loyal. You know what? Like most of the times, um, we do we need to do our work and then um. It is our duty to do the work, right? If it is a mom, then she'll take care of the kids. She will cook the family. She will cook the food. She'll take care of the family, etc. Then dad goes for the work. He, he makes sure that we all are get paid. Like everybody is doing their job, right? That's what these donkeys also within the in the farm, right? They started talking. It's our duty to work very hard, and um, we should be loyal to our parents, right? Like that, the donkeys are talking and we should be loyal to our farmer, I mean, like the owner of that, right? Then um, one donkey, right? When this fat donkey started talking to other, you know, like not every other donkey will be the same, right? One donkey is telling that um, I should listen to this guy. Maybe he is telling something good to me. Then he is immediately agreeing that, okay, we will become a good friends. You know, like uh, it's, it's a partner in crime, right? If if this one wanted to do bad things and he finds someone, then he wants to make the friends with other, right? So like that, he is making one other donkey as the friend, okay? And then they, they both become very good friends. It's just a two days, okay? Then um, as soon as the farmer, right, he comes to know that, okay, this donkey is trying to influence um, the other donkeys who are working really good. Um, I really have to return this back. You see, this farmer came to know that these two become very good friends. The other donkeys are doing their work. Then he is telling that um, the next day he comes back to the washerman, you please take your donkey. I don't want your donkey. Okay, what happened? Why did you return my donkey? Okay, he makes friends with the lazy donkey. So I conclude that this donkey is almost of the similar nature. You know what? He doesn't want to tell that this uh, fat donkey is making the other donkeys lazy, right? Rather, he is telling in a, you know, like very tricky way that um, he makes friends with the lazy donkey. So he wanted to return the, um, uh, he wanted to return the donkey, okay? So again, this washerman started putting the board because the donkey, whoever the farmer took back, right? He returned the donkey back. So again, he put the sailboard. Okay, so what is the moral? Let's discuss about the moral. Uh, um, I don't know how to see the participants. Yeah, I see that. Ma, who raised the hand? Satrik? Satrik? Uh, yes, ma, thank you. you yeah, ma. Should, you should test, test the thing that the person's giving you before um, buying it. Um, somewhat similar. Smriti? Mataji, uh, um, be in the association of others who are good and you will be good. One second. Uh, I think it's time to close the <laughs> and yeah, yeah. finish the two stories. You know what is the model? I'm going to read the model because I over time, bypass time by 10 15 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so you see that a person is known by the company he keeps. Lazy people like to keep the association with the lazy people. So, what is the moral? We need to we need to try to influence others. We shouldn't get influenced by others. Okay. 
that is the moral we learnt out of this story okay so we should be in the association of the devotees like right? that is the moral we learnt here okay did you guys like the story yes mata ji yeah. i have one yes, more story Mataji. but we will do it next week okay yes, i'll come up with some other stories next week yes mata ji all right thank you so much hari krishna and also mata ji one more last thing krishna yeah ma uh next time when you tell story you can add the you can add the like last story that you didn't tell yes okay ma okay ma <laughs> okay, ma i'll i'll take your things okay i have one more story and i'll add more stories into it okay did you guys enjoy yes, give a thumbs up yes ma yes ma ji all right great thank you all so much hari krishna hari krishna mata ji hari ji vaanja mata ji namas ja kripa sindhu gaye vacha pati tara